Sensors come in all shapes and sizes. There are big sensors, there are medium sensors, and there are small sensors. But they're all just a collection of small pixels. And these pixels individually convert the light and together create the whole image. And all of them mimic what was established for over a hundred years before the digital revolution, and that was film. Sensors, like film, take an image from the light that falls onto them. In film, the frame would be exposed to light, which I've just ruined this brand new film, and then onto the next frame and repeated until there's enough images to create a moving image. With sensors, they convert the light that falls onto the photo sensors to a digital image, and that's turned into a video file. Not only do sensors copy film stock with how they work, they also copy them in their frame sizes. We have all sorts of different size sensors. We have eight millimeter sensors, 60 millimeter sensors, Super 35, full frame and beyond, and loads in between. This is 35 millimeter film for stills cameras. And when you put it in your camera and take a photo, this is the image that will go on there, this sort of size. But if you want to do motion pictures, that eats up a lot of film. So it goes through this way, which means loads more frames per second the only difference is the size. The size is much smaller. This is where we get super 35 millimeter from, as opposed to 35 millimeter. It's the same film, but the image is different, smaller size. Film has also affected the way we watch movies. We like to see our films in a landscape ratio as our eyes see the world in a similar way. Originally, film was projected similarly in a square format, four by three. This was the full use of the frame then added audio meant they decided to cut a portion of the film strip for that audio track. This then created the wider look we used to seeing now. The addition of anamorphic lenses in the filming and projecting allowed us to create an ultra-wide aspect ratio, which is brought in to combat the popularity of TV by providing a truly unique experience only available in cinema. In this lovely digital age that we're in, not the Matrix, we're not in the Matrix, it doesn't exist, but if we were, I would probably take the blue pill because the food is better. Anyway, we do have access to create any form of story and make the Aspect Work Show work for us to the experience. We've broken free of the constraints of film and have entered into the world of 2D art with the option of portrait video, which is not great, personally, but it is, I do use it for things like Instagram stories. It is useful for exhibitions and conferences, but me, not so much. I prefer it the traditional way. In fact, I prefer an even wider aspect ratio. I love CinemaScope, and when I got my first Video 8 camera back in 1987, I stuck on a bit of cardboard in front of the lens to try and make it look like pretend CinemaScope. It didn't work very well. Well, CinemaScope, it's a very interesting aspect ratio, but as the director Fritz Lang said famously, it's only good for two things, filming snakes and funeral processions. I have filmed snakes though, not any funeral processions. No, I have done both, but ironically I did that in 4x3. Portrait aspects have had a place in our culture for thousands of years, and one of the current challenges for filmmakers is to use this and see how they can utilise it in their storytelling but mostly it's for Instagram stories. Changes brought by mobile technology has forced us onto us simply because of how we hold our phone. We hold our phone this way, not this way. And as for that square aspect ratio that we started off with, well, social media is now reintroducing it into video as a perfect stop gap between the two ratios for mobile. Personally though, this is the way to hold your phone.